Hugo Spowers is the driving force behind a small company in Ludlow, England, with the poetic name of River Simple, whose sweeping goal is to systematically pursue the elimination of the environmental damage caused by personal transport. To do this, Spowers and his colleagues have reimagined the whole automobile industry. They're building a different car out of different materials with a different fuel, hydrogen, and a completely different business model. I suppose I reached the conclusion that um, uh, we needed a step change in technology. We need to get away from combustion engines altogether. And so prolonging their tenure was no longer a, a defensible strategy. And I got out not knowing what on earth I was going to do, but I knew it was going to be nothing to do with cars because the only future for environmentally sustainable cars, I thought, was with better batteries, and that's the realm of big companies, big labs, big budgets, not my sort of world at all. And then I uh, uh, spent a week um, on a course with Paul Hawkin, uh, who you probably know, and uh, Paul uh, told me about fuel cells, which I'd never heard of before at all. And, and I realised that actually the, the step change really wouldn't, wasn't uh, uh, at the fuel cell level, making better fuel cells. Sure, there's work to be done there, but the really big step to be made was in the systems integration, putting the whole car together in a different pattern of relationships. When you talk about systems integration, tell me a little bit more about what that means. Well, uh, a fuel cell is not doesn't do the same things as a petrol engine. It does some of the same things. It converts a fuel into another form of energy. Um, and uh, it, it is to be regarded as equivalent to an engine in, a, in that the size of the fuel cell limits the power of the car. It doesn't limit the range. The range is limited by the tank, uh, a hydrogen tank in this case, rather than a petrol tank. But it doesn't have a rotating shaft coming out that can drive the wheels. It just has electricity coming out. And so, it's a non-overlapping, it's an overlapping but not congruent Venn diagram, if you like. And so you can't take out the petrol engine and put in the fuel cell in its place because it doesn't do the same things. Um, and really you need to um, change multiple, all the pattern of relationships at once. And that dramatically reduces the risks, reduces the barriers and enables uh, a commercially viable fuel cell car to be produced here and now. And if you think about it, when any radical idea is, is ever proposed, people think, people think that, that the prudent way forwards is, is to change one thing at a time. And that's absolutely true if you're optimising something. But whenever a radical idea is proposed, people, the conversation instantly goes straight to all the reasons why it can't be done. And by and large, those reasons are generally true. But they assume that the context within which this radical idea is embedded remains the same. But that whole context, that network, is optimised around a, an entirely different historic component or idea that is what we've been doing. And if you're prepared to change that whole context, all those connections, which are all the barriers to implementing this radical idea, all those, those, those barriers can literally disappear. And uh, in our case, we have got uh, four electric motors in the four wheels and we've got the fuel cell that provides electricity to drive the motors. And the motors are also brakes, so they charge, uh, they generate electricity when you want to slow down and they charge a ban bank of ultra capacitors under the seats of the car. And this we call a network hybrid. People talk about a parallel hybrid where you either have an electric motor driving the wheels or a combustion engine, or a series hybrid, that's the Prius, or a series hybrid where a small petrol engine charges batteries which then drive the car. Ours is neither of those, it's a, it's a network hybrid in that every component, all the motors and the fuel cell and the uh, ultra capacitors are all connected to each other in a network and energy can flow on either path in any direction in either direction on any path in either direction except back into the fuel cell when you accelerate the fuel cell actually only provides 20% of the power 80% comes from the capacitors and uh, the, the key thing about that is that you can have a, a car with the same performance with only 20% of the power 
And as I said, power is the real problem of the fuel cell. So that, in one fell swoop, makes a huge difference to the practicality of building a fuel cell car. That's wonderful. It's lovely to see, uh, to see something like this as a, as a small plant and then see the potential for it to become a very, I mean, as you said, you referred to the possibility of spreading like wildfire. I can imagine that. I think that's quite possible. I think essentially you've, we've, the only way to, uh, to, to get the level of change that we require, there is a gulf between where we are with transport and where we need to get to. And the only way to implement this change, I understand all the inertial issues that the industry faces, but I've long since sort of given up any idea that you change the regulatory environment to force people to do it or anything like that. Um, the only way is, as Buckminster Fuller said, you change things, you don't fight the existing reality, you build a better model that makes the existing model obsolete. And in this case, the critical thing is to make more money. Actually, if the, if the model is more profitable, then it will take off. And at the moment, the, uh, the, the auto segment is very, very highly geared, very, very small margins. The vast majority of their costs are fixed, very low variable costs, very incapable of dealing with fluctuating demand in the market. It all, to, all in all, it's a very brittle system. And it has got no obvious answers to the, the pressures over energy consumption and, and climate change. And so um, if you can build a model that is more profitable and more nimble and agile than that, that is the surest way to get change and, and the regulators will follow. Hugo Spowers of River Semple, a company in the small English town of Ludlow which seeks to create a truly sustainable automobile industry. If you enjoyed this interview, you may want to watch our interviews on energy with David Hughes and Jeff Rubin, or our interview about green business with Andrew Heinzman. For the green interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time.